During the COVID lockdowns, there were many changes to our daily lives. One that sort of caught me by surprise was the amount of time I spent watching television. It wasn't the electric or streaming bills that surprised me though. It was the frequency of recharging needed for the batteries in my wireless keyboard. To see what I mean, stay tuned. My home entertainment is nothing fancy. I have a ZTE Android tablet casting to a 42 inch LG television. The tablet is always powered on and I use the remote to turn on the TV. I then use a wireless keyboard to get Android to cast the tablet screen to the television and at that point I can use the TV like a big screen computer or for entertainment like YouTube. The 12 to 18 hours of constant keyboard use takes its toll on the batteries. I could not go more than a week before the keyboard would stop working and the batteries would need to be recharged. After a month of doing this though, I felt it was time for a change. I'm going to use these parts to make a simple external battery compartment for my wireless keyboard. It will extend its approximate 60 to 90 hours of usage time to something more along the lines of 300 to 400 hours of usage time. Let's get started. The first thing I want to do is run wires from the electrical leads inside the keyboard compartment out to where I can connect it to an external battery pack. How I'm going to do this is to fill the space in the keyboard's battery compartment with a tube that will serve as a battery blank. This tube will be cut into pieces that can fit into the compartment. They don't need to be the same size as the battery, just the same total length. The least number of pieces that can fill the compartment is the best. I'm cutting the thin sheet of electrically conductive metal from a made in China 25 foot tape measure. The tape measure is from Walmart for $4. It's a lot cheaper than a similar amount of sheet metal from a hardware store. I'm guessing at the length of wire I need since I'm still not sure how it'll connect to the external battery pack. I've cut the sheet into circles the same diameter as the plastic tube. I'm going to make a positive and negative terminal by soldering together the wire and the circle. Each terminal will sit on each side of the battery blank where it meets the electric poles in the keyboard's battery compartment. For both plastic tubes, I'm going to cut a hole where the wire can exit the battery blank and be connected to the external battery pack. I'm now going to string the wire through the tube to create the battery blank. As long as the circles cover the top of the tube, mostly, it can be glued in place with goo. Cut a hole in the compartment door where the wires exit the battery blank. Run the battery blank wires through the hole, then close the compartment door. For the battery compartment, the basic parts are the tape measure metal strip, wire, and half inch PVC pipe. I'm replacing the original two AAA batteries that were in the keyboard's battery compartment with four AA batteries that will fill the external battery compartment. I'll start with cutting the PVC to a rough length. I'll cut the PVC about an inch longer than the total length of the four AA batteries. The extra inch will give me enough room to design some kind of end caps for the compartment. Cut a slot in the middle of the PVC not more than halfway through the pipe. This slot will hold a metal stopper where the positive side of the batteries in series will meet. Also, keep in mind that my table saw uses a handheld circular saw blade, so it's a lot thinner than the standard table saw blade. I've already cut a strip of metal to fit the slot. It should insert until it bottoms out, and there should be enough strip sticking out of the slot to bend and create a landing to solder wire to. I'll remove the strip for now and return to it later. Cut a slot like this at both ends of the PVC up to, but not beyond, one battery length before the slot in the middle. I'm going to put the batteries into the compartment so I can mark the extent of the space they'll take up on either side of the stopper. Here are two springs where the longer one is what I cut into to make the shorter one. The spring will sit at both ends of the compartment. I want to position the spring slightly past the battery mark 
so that it will push on the batteries like a normal battery compartment. To help me create a mount for the spring, I'm going to use this dowel to keep the spring in just the right spot where it should be mounted. Heat the very end of the PVC with the burner on high. It should take a little more than a minute to get it soft enough to squeeze with the plier till the two sides meet. Hold the sides together till the PVC cools in about a minute. Once the ends are closed up, removing the dowel is a little tricky. Remove the spring, then push from the other end while you pry or pull the dowel out of the compartment. Drill a hole on both ends of the compartment to allow a wire to pass through. The hole should be a loose fit for the wire, but not too much larger. Cut two lengths of wire, then solder one to the end of each spring. This will be the negative terminals from both sides of the compartment. Put both spring assemblies through each side of the battery compartment. Make sure the spring is able to sit flat against the bottom of the compartment. Glue the side of the spring where the hole is. Avoid getting glue on the other end of the spring. Use a piece of tape to hold the spring in place till the glue dries. For the rest of this video, I'll narrate the highlights of finishing up the extended compartment using these parts that now need to be combined. In the background is the stopper with the positive wire soldered in place. In the foreground, I'm cleaning up the negative wire runs by gluing them against the compartment. While waiting for the glued compartment wires to dry, I also glued the stopper into its slot. With all the major pieces ready, I can now finish up my keyboard. And here it is. As mentioned earlier, I'm guessing I should get quadruple the runtime with my new battery compartment. By the time you see this video, I may not need that much runtime on my batteries, thinking that I'll be back at work and no longer working from home for out of five days a week. Right now, it's mid-June, I'm still working from home. Tourists are required to quarantine for 14 days upon arrival, and the governor of our state has extended stay-at-home orders till the end of July. We'll have to see how that plays out. I hope this video can help you add extended battery life to your wireless keyboard or any other battery operated device. Leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. That's all I have for now and I'll catch you in the next video.